Good morning here. Good afternoon or evening there. Um, I'm Valerie Milano with the Hollywood Times, and I'm going to let you go ahead and introduce yourself, Rebecca. Thank you. Good morning and good evening for me <laughs> from our different <laughs> time zones. Um, yeah, I'm Rebecca Harris Turner. So I'm head of film at a production company called Slick Film. So I've worked there for quite a long time now, almost 10 years, I think. So quite a long time. Okay. Well, thank you for being with us here at the Hollywood Times dot today. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of your films that I've reviewed or the three films that Holly Shorts that we yeah. reviewed um, is La, uh, La Soledad. I'll, please forgive me because it's early here. Um, okay. okay. Uh, I love Soledad. That's fine. <laughs> it's, um, it, it was shot in Mexico. So that's why. I had to ask for the pronunciation the first time we came across the project as well, so don't worry. So please, will you please please pronounce it? Isla Soledad. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Into Deep and George. Um, and were you here when Holly Shorts was um, was on for their part of their junket? I wasn't actually at Holly Shorts. We really okay. wanted to go. It just didn't quite match up, but we were really, yeah, proud to have quite, yeah, three of our films from our slate showing that was really, really, really lovely because we um, met some of the filmmakers, you know, quite a long time ago. So we've been there for the whole process from start to finish when they were at the start, you know, very passionate, but it's a bit overwhelming at the start. And then to see that they got this far and it's got into Holly Shorts was very nice. Yeah. Good. Do you usually go to the um, film festivals when your films are accepted? Can, but, um, Omar and Camilla from Isla Soledad, they went to the festival. They went to Holly Short, so the filmmakers yeah. behind that one, the director and the producer. So they went there. We're always encouraging our filmmakers to go as much as possible, and we try to go as well where we can. So, yeah, we did have some, we did have them representing everything there. So obviously they were happy with the audiences and and pleased with how the films were received. Um, I was I was there being in Hollywood. Obviously, how 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 was I not at Holly Short? So yeah. um, I covered a, a lot of the the films there, and um, I'm finding out that there is a lot of of short film festivals. Um, I usually color, cover television, but it seems like. I'm really getting a lot more involved in the short film festivals and and the regular feature film festivals. Once you get in the shorts festivals, it's really hard to get out because it's so easy to become passionate. And when you turn up, you get kind of whisked away by all the people you meet and to all these different, um, you know, events and you meet so many filmmakers and start. To, to, and yeah, suddenly you're booked up for the next week at the festival. You've got so many things to do and it's just, yeah. Um, it's a, an amazing experience. And Camilla and Omar, they came away buzzing from Holly Shorts. So they had a brilliant okay. time. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. So um, so when the film festivals, are, are there many there? Please excuse my ignorance, but are there many there where you where you are? Film yeah, festivals? Yeah there's, yeah, there's quite a few. Obviously, you've got um, the qualifiers, the Oscar and BAFTA qualifiers, and then right. you've got some smaller festivals that are brilliant as well. I think, um, for instance, because uh, we've been making shorts for so long over so many years, we've seen some festivals that started out and they were known as a smaller one. So now they've become quite big in our area. So one example is like Bolton International Film Festival, because um, that its first year was with The Silent Child for us. And that's the film that won the Oscar and it won a few awards there. And that was its first year. And now it's a BAFTA qualifying festival. <laughs> yeah um, so um so yeah now that's a qualifying it's huge and got a really good reputation so because we've stuck with the shorts for so long and keep making more and more with more filmmakers we've yeah. seen festivals grow over time as well so, yeah well you've had a, you, you have a bachelor's degree in film production um so you know so set out to be a producer from sort of day one right Yes, yes, yeah. I did. Um, I do think it took me a while to work out that was where I fit in because I think um, I just thought, you know, all the credits you see on films, I was just obsessed with films from a really young age. And I think on all the credits, I was like, I'm sure there's something I can do there. <laughs> in all those roles, I'm sure there's something I can do. And so in university, I kind of tried everything. I did a bit of camera operating, directing, editing, 
Um, and then I kind of just fell into it. Like everyone kind of got me in that role. They wanted me to do the organizing and I seemed to be good at that. And then, um, yeah, about a year after I got my degree, I got a call from someone who I worked on my final year project with, um, which was just a really rubbish film at university, an awful film. <laughs> that rubbish. I, I won't tell you the name of so no one can find it. Um, but um, but he he um, knew Chris Overton, who's the CEO of Slick Film. And he was at the time, it was Slick Showreels. So it's quite a small startup. And he was looking for someone to help with the organizing. And I was recommended to him. And I think I was volunteering somewhere and I got a call to go and meet in the next hour. I was like, okay, I'll go. Um, I just kind of got stuck in there producing showreels. So that scene for actors, you go out and you shoot something that we've written for them to help them get in the room, get a car, you know, get um, get in a room and get auditions basically. And um, we've done, we did that for a few years. So I was kind of producing showreels and that's like, I think it went from a few showreels to like over 20 a month we were doing. So um, we did that. And then, yeah, we met, um, well, I met Rachel through Chris, Rachel Shenton through Chris, who had the script for The Silent Child, which would go on to win an Oscar. Um, and that meant that it thrust us all, because I was a producer on that, and it thrust us all into a position where we looked very experienced when we weren't at that stage. It was like our first short. We did it in a very unorthodox way and not by the rules doing kind of several roles each of us um and in a way it's quite hard to find that magic again of your first short the first professional short and looking back you could see almost the fact we didn't know everything was the reason why it did so well in a way um but yeah and since then I've just been trying to learn as much as I possibly can about how to produce basically just um and that's why we did we did even more shorts after that before going straight to a feature film because we really didn't feel like we'd earned our stripes yet. We thought we'd um obviously it was through hard work, but we felt we there's a bit of luck there as well of the first one doing so well. And we yeah. needed to learn how to do our roles. How did that actually work? So we started to work with other filmmakers to try and help them, give them the inspiration along the way with their shorts, but also for us to learn as well, <laughs> learn a bit more. Yeah. Well, after, after, and I'm going to say a little bit about this question I'm about to say, because I know a lot of our audience doesn't know, but after picking the Oscar up for, for best live action short film for, for the silent child at the 90th Academy uh, Awards in 2018, how much pressure do you feel to repeat that achievement? I know you're awarded honorary PhD um, by your school, the University of West London, in recognition of that Oscar. So how much how much pressure do you feel to to repeat that achievement? I yes, so it was definitely a lot of pressure right after that for the first few years afterwards. Um, but I think um we've learned that you've got to kind of forget it and just get on with it and concentrate on telling stories that you want to tell and have the right reasons still for making it, not trying to, you know, go for that again, necessarily. It's more if it's a good film and it's getting the audience it needs and it's getting the exposure it needs and it's starting the conversations you wanted it to start, then you've done your job. You've done what you wanted and set out to do. But I think if you aim for that again, you go down the wrong path. And I, I think for a little bit after we won the Oscar, we did have to take a bit of a time out because of all the pressure. Mm -hmm. and, and in other ways, you feel like looking back, maybe you should have just gone for it. But I think we needed to learn a bit more. And that was just, just the truth of it. And that's so we, I think um, we, we don't regret that decision because it's led us down this path. Mm -hmm. And we feel like um, we were able to guide other filmmakers that when they're at the start of the process they're just like we can't do this we don't know how to do it and like well we did it it did and so that means you can as well so um and for the projects that we do ourselves it's yeah just trying to keep in mind what's important um and not chase that too much well congratulations because that's a huge honor and I know it's been a while but still it I'm sure that that excitement is still in your bloodstream so good for you oh absolutely I think <laughs> that, um yeah it taught us a lot it taught us um I mean when I say it taught us I think I'm someone who kind of likes to do things by the book I like detail I like 
I like things to be very clear and before we make decisions, but um, you do have to remember sometimes how we made the silent child and that you do need to just go for it and take a bit of a risk sometimes. Um, but I think, yeah, as time goes on, I'll have to remind myself of that a bit more and more when I'm like, no, we need to do everything the right way. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah. I, it's still very relevant. Of course, it's who we are as filmmakers, I think. Well, speaking of awards and getting back to the films that were here, um, Into Deep picked up the prestigious March Award for the best short film at the Canadian Cinematography Awards this year. That had to also feel good. So, it yeah, it's picked up a few a few awards at some amazing festivals. It's um, there was a bit of del a delay with the festival run for Into Deep, so we were thinking it wasn't going to do so well and we couldn't quite understand we thought it was just a run time or something because it's very much about AI and obviously the AI topic has kicked off recently and then suddenly all the festival news kicked off so um you do have to be a bit patient sometimes and um yeah because it, it it was a while um but it, yeah it's really it seems to be quite timely and relevant and we didn't more timely than when we set out to make the project because we took it on because we thought it was relevant and very important to tell the story. But now it's become even more so and you couldn't have predicted that with the strikes and all, all of those things. Well, yeah, the first time I saw um, In Too Deep, I remember I was in the in the audience at uh, at the, the short film festival. And seriously, I mean, the the. Other films had happened at that at that during that block, and people were clapping afterwards as they do. Well, yeah. after that, and they the, the Chiron came up that said AI, whatever that was that it said, and the whole room was silent. And it was like how how strange that must have felt for the people in the room that worked with the film. You know what I'm saying? It was because yeah. everybody's so so whatever the word is scared whatever about it and now we're all have this strike going on sort of about it and it was just it was kind of kind of creepy yes. whatever for lack of a better word it's so, creepy it is, yeah. yeah it's got a dark tone to it and I think yeah. you no know, again it's when I read the script it's, it told us me something new personally and I was yes. like well and that's kind of what I like to come across and what I like to work on um and Yes, uh, it's quite scary and it's a bit darker than what we've done before. Um, and I think I appreciate you telling me how the audience reacted in that. Yeah, scene. it was pretty quiet. I, I have, I think I've seen it with one, two audiences, but it's just nice to hear. Yeah. I always love it when I hear someone else's watched it from afar. And, um, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> So on that note, um, since Slick is headquartered in London, um, how has the SAG after strike affected you, you know, in, in, in the BAFTA involvement? Well, um, I was at um, Galway Film Festival in Ireland and a few people, like actors and things, were flying over to do um, master classes and things like that. And they couldn't do that when it arrived because the strike was happening at Galway it was like the first um, festival affected by it um so people would fly over then on their way over they're told they can't do what they've flown over to do <laughs> basically and they were and they decided to support that as well um of course um but with slick i think um because i was there for one of our films that was showing but with slick i think um i mean we've had a few more companies reaching out to us i would say because we're in london so but I think it, it's a bit of a, a subject because you feel like you should be supporting even if you're not part of that. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess, you know, in some ways we're just doing all we can to support in the ways that we can. And, and, and it is good. We're just having Zoom meetings, but they probably won't kick off until after the strike is sorted out. So we have conversations yeah. about that. But it's right. very much like if it's a, with American companies, especially, it's very much for future, <laughs> potentially for the future, you know. And you sort of already talked about it. But so going forward, do you want to talk a little bit more about your vision for Slick aside from that? Yeah. So, um, so obviously, we've done quite a large slate of shorts. We've got about 35 going and we just actually did a showcase in 
in London for a few of them, which was really nice to see the first batch completed. And then we've got some more going into production and some more in development. Um, and we just brought on board a new head of short film because myself and Chris, who's the CEO, and Rachel, who's the company director, we kind of want to move into long form now. And that's kind of the biggest change that's happened to our company. So um, we've brought on a new head of shorts called Mustafa Webby, who's brilliant, very proactive, and he's already making really big changes because we want to keep the short films going. That's where we find new filmmakers and the voices and keep the diversity within the stories we're telling. And um, it kind of allows people to step up. Filmmakers can work on our show roles, then they can step up to the shorts. And then we hope to step up, they can step up to the features when we're making those. And we're quite close to that point now. We've got a feature film that's half funded. So finally, it feels like it's moving and should shoot next year. Um, So yes, that's it. Kind of what our goal is at the moment, move into long form, but keeping everything we've built going at the same time, which is quite a task, but we're committed to doing that. Okay. Well, I know we're both very busy and I want to take again at the time to appreciate your time. And we are the Hollywood Times dot today. And mm-hmm. um, please keep in touch and look forward to working with you again. And um, our YouTube channel is the Hollywood Times official. So um, keep bringing us great work and uh, yeah, have a great Thank rest you of your time. evening and I'll have a great rest of my day. Of your morning and day. Yes. Yes. Yeah. To meet you. Thanks so much. Thank you again, Rebecca. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.